much for tuning into the Inner Revolution podcast. My prayer today is these words will speak to you where you live and create lasting change. It's great to be with you today and love love what we're hearing on this uh, on this broadcast. And it's uh, hearing so much from many of you that this is really a lifeline for you. So we hope to hear from you later today uh, in the broadcast on the subject. But really, uh, just as I was studying this, I thought... Uh, about wisdom's resolve, and I, I guess I want—I guess that's the title of my thought today about wisdom's resolve. And we're in such a cancel culture today, where uh, so many people are rendered irrelevant; uh, they're shamed based on actions or misunderstandings of things done or said. But there is a clear message from the mind of Christ and the application of his heart, and that is wisdom. Wisdom is crying out in the streets. And uh, think about that today. If we could define wisdom, and I think Pastor did a great job yesterday about defining wisdom, Uh, and just to complement that is to say that wisdom really is the mind of Christ, and it's applied with God's heart. So when we think about the application of knowledge, when we think about uh, just the uh, the depths of uh, of wisdom uh, we need it so desperately in James one five we ask for it liberally, but when we think about wisdom, I mean over and over in proverbs, and I want to kind of touch on a several topics here, uh, several verses about wisdom. Wisdom has resolve, and and what I mean by that is resolve is is something that's decided firmly on a course of action. It's firmness of purpose. So when we think about wisdom today, uh, yes, knowledge is important. It's the facts and information that, that, that builds up a mindset, yes, but wisdom is so much greater. It's really the mind of Christ applied with the heart of God behind it, and that creates an action. Wisdom is active. It's not just a fatalistic idea. Uh, it's not someone a passive idea, but it's actively thinking with God and and walking in the spirit of God in application. And I think in our day and age, we really we really need wisdom because there is so much um, deceptive information, feelings, uh, and some so many illusions that can cause someone to be so riled up in their emotions and that they do not find wisdom. You know, uh, I I read this today. It's interesting. One person said people can be like thermometers. They can reflect their surroundings, but others can be like a thermostat that changes the temperature of their surrounding. And I think that's the difference between not, I think that's the difference between wisdom and knowledge is that people can be like thermometers. Uh, They can reflect what's going on in their surroundings. There's a lot going on in our nation, and uh, people can just be uh, just a, kind of like a parrot to what's going on. But wisdom is like a thermostat. It changes the temperature of our surroundings. So wisdom in a believer's life can really be a, uh, a game changer. Well, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 33, all these verses are so good, but wisdom cries... Wisdom cries aloud in the street and raises her voice in the market. She cries cries at the head of the noisy intersections in the chief gathering places. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, open to evil, will you love being made simple? This is the amplified version. And the scoffers delight in scoffing, and self-confident fools hate knowledge. If you will turn and repent and give heed, to my reproof, behold, I, wisdom, will pour out my spirit upon you, and I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you have refused to answer, I have stretched out my hand and no man has heeded it. He goes on to say how wisdom has this uh, cry. It is uh, There's actually several definitions of this where it's reading something aloud. It's reading truth. It is expressing truth. It's, it's uh, communicating truth. 
one writer says that it's crying out, wisdom is crying out the names of God or the name of God. Very interesting, uh, where it's crying out not only uh, what God wants to happen, but who God is. Imagine that wisdom in James chapter 3 is from above. But there's a contrasting wisdom from below as well uh, in 3.15 through 18. Also, wisdom is crying out to summons, and we just read that. It's calling us to God. And this is the resolve that we're talking about today, just like David had resolve when he saw Goliath. He didn't just uh, you know, cast it down or explained it away, uh, but instead he, was, he discerned the wisdom of God, and he ran at the giant in the name of the Lord and in the power of God and in he imagined in his in wisdom and in faith the victory and this is really what wisdom does wisdom doesn't just look at the facts it looks beyond the facts it looks at the end of the matter considers the end where is this decision going to take me what is the cause of my decision what is the cause of my speech what is the end game we fast forward beyond the present and look at the end and then we get that, uh, that wisdom, that insight, and then God gives us decision in the moment. That's what David had. That's what Esther had. That's what uh, we see so many people. Stephen, think about that. Stephen had it uh, as he was being stoned. He, he preached wisdom, and God took him home uh, with, great, with great power. And he affected people, just like Samson, he affected so many people in his death as in his life. Well, wisdom, we could say, is the revelations of God addressing practical issues of life. This is an interesting point, too. Wisdom is the revelations of God addressing practical issues of life. And, and this is why wisdom has such resolve. This is why wisdom cries out. Look at Proverbs 8 is because it's crying out, and who is listening? Have you ever been in a very noisy place, and there's uh, people, the person could be right next to you, and they're screaming, and you barely hear them, and because there's so much commotion around you. And I, I just had this, this imagine, imagination that, imagine wisdom is crying out everywhere, but to some it's only lip syncing. It's it's only it's you can only see the lips moving. But to the believer, he is drawing near in the mind of Christ. He is seeking her out in Proverbs eight one through five, in Proverbs chapter two one through ten, seeking her out like fine silver. And then what happens as we draw near in the fear of the Lord, in Proverbs nine three and ten, we begin to hear her. We begin to understand her. We begin to discern her. And guess what? We begin to hear the message that is being cried out. And that message is to uh, is the same mind that Jesus operated in. Seek and save the lost. Have the work of an evangelist. Preach the truth in season and out, out of season. To be faithful in, Pro, in Philippians 4, uh, 9, to what you've heard, what you've learned, what you've seen. Wisdom is reflecting always the mind of Christ and the application of the heart of God and the Spirit of God. So wisdom is constantly showing us a revelation of God, but addressing practical truths. So, you know, it's our decisions. Where does our decisions take you? In wisdom, we pray, and God says, okay, this decision is going to take you down this road. That drink will take you down this way. That smoke will take you down this way. That woman or that man will take you down this way. And we need time to understand and practically hear what the Spirit is saying so that we enter into wisdom's resolve. Remember, resolve is a form, a firm course of action, a firmness of purpose. Otherwise, I'm just a spineless jellyfish. I'm just a wish-washy person that, that uh, you know, has no backbone and this is a time it's for Christians to stand on the promises of God and to uh, be, in a, be a receiver of wisdom. 
Uh, cause it's just more than just intellect. You know, it's more than just intellect. It's more than just knowledge. It's more than just experience. It's really w- wisdom could be defined as a special gift or ability to see clearly, discern correctly, understand deeply, and to judge appropriately. Isn't that good? So wisdom is much more than just an intellectual, an intellectual uh, connection. It is a special gift or ability to see clearly, discern correctly, understand deeply, and to judge appropriately. And guess what? If we're not in the Word, we will not have wisdom. If we're not in prayer, we will not have wisdom. We will get into some emotional devotional or some emotional expression or some emotional, fantastic, exhausting uh, soapbox, and wisdom is sitting there crying out, and we are ignoring her. Well, to the believer in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1, doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She stands at the top places and the paths and meets and stands. Uh, she stands in the top on high places, by the way, in the places of her path. She cries out at the gates at the entry of the city and the coming of the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, be, O ye simple, excuse me, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. You know, I feel like in our nation, uh, we are hearing wisdom being uh, communicated, but sometimes we are distracted. You know, we're distracted in our own ways. Uh, And this is why Proverbs chapter 3 is so important. Um, You know, if we're acknowledging ourself, we will not acknowledge wisdom. If we acknowledge our own ways, then we will not acknowledge wisdom. If we uh, look at this in Proverbs 3, uh, 5 and 6, lean on, trust, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Notice that Isaiah eleven three. Jesus didn't even make decisions based on what he saw or what he heard. Same principle. But in all your ways, recognize, acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight your and plain your path. So, I mean, it, this is the key here, I think, because uh, we must enter into wisdom's resolve. We must have a firmness of purpose. Daniel 1, eight. we must purpose in our heart to honor God, to guard what is sacred, to confess uh, God before men. We must have that mindset of what is the mind of Christ. It's to value Scripture. It's to value the cross. It's to value discipleship. It's to, dev- it's to value absolute truth and not enter into to a, to a cancel culture, to uh, the cultural norms, to elevate what's culturally acceptable, uh, cultural liberalism, uh, these all these things lack wisdom, and they're from below in James 3.18. Well, I'm, I'm just stirred up with you today. Uh, give a couple of verses here more. Uh, For the Lord God gives wisdom, and his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2.6. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for she is more profitable than silver yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you can desire can compare with her. In Proverbs 3, 13 through 15. <laughs> uh, I mean, today, I mean, it's hard to know who to, to, who to trust, who to, what is true. I mean, in so many, there's so many uh, con artists, but you know what? Wisdom leads us back to God. Wisdom leads us back to truth. Wisdom is the mind of Christ applied with the spirit of God's heart. So today, let's be thermostats. Let's change our surroundings rather than thermometers that just reflect our surroundings. Uh, that's, a, that's a big deal. We need wisdom, wisdom on raising our family, wisdom in answering uh, the systematic cosmic lie, wisdom when we're confronted with the the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age, how will we answer? How will we function? Will we compromise or will we stand strong on the promises of God? Wisdom, uh, it is the principal thing. And we won't have it unless we're in the word. I mean, how is it? You know, our churches are open. Our church is open. Uh, you know, 
how is it that you know we're not filling our seat in the church let let's uh let's have wisdom and draw near and and not make excuses and uh, be led by God but don't make excuses i say that to myself first but let's let's have a spirit of wisdom and and draw near and speak the truth in love think of what jesus said in 15:5 of john without me you can do nothing like without waiting at the gates guess what uh, there's not going to be power in our life. There's not going to be anointing. You know, if I don't receive wisdom, I'm going to be a needy Christian. I'm going to be a weak Christian in the wrong sense. I'm going to need people to pacify and meet my needs based on my my uh, my standards, my preferences. Well, uh, the remnant, the true church, is is really what's going to pierce the darkness in these last days. I mean, look what Isaiah says, 33, 6. He says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and str- the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Uh, and I love what Pastor Shabelli said about the fear of the Lord. It's like, you know, if we're not actively drawing near, yeah, but if we're distancing ourselves, then we're actively being pushed backwards because uh, there's no neutrality. This is not a time for neutrality. It's either I'm intentionally moving forward or I'm being pushed backwards. Uh, and I can deny that all day long, but it doesn't. It does not. Um, it doesn't matter. That there's no neutrality here. That uh, like waiting at the gate. That's an intentional decision that you said, and, and I love that. But the fear of this is the wisdom and knowledge is stability, stability. And we're in a day and age when churches are closed, leaders are distant in some regards, and that's their business. But I heard shockingly, 85% of churches are closed in Maryland, and 92% of those 85% are not going to come back. Like, what is that? I'm stirred up about that. That is that is the wisdom of, oh, by the way, here's another thing. Fear is rooted in self-preservance. So if I'm preserving my life, guess what? I'm not living in wisdom. It's, I mean, you, can, you have to take every statistic with a grain of salt, but <clears throat> sometimes a, a lot of salt, but... Um, and we just look around, people we meet on the streets, um, uh, many are, uh, they're like orphans. They're just uh, wandering without a shepherd right now. And, and I, I just go back to wisdom's resolve. What's wisdom say? What's wisdom doing? What's wisdom's mindset? It's to be intentional. It's not to back up, put up, or shut up. It's not to shrink back in 2410 of Proverbs. It's to be intentional, lovingly, but fiercely fierce wisdom is fierce it 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 pursues what god is doing and saying he didn't just casually say seek and save the lost jesus gave everything to seek and save the lost so um yeah he'll give us what we need to to have that insight to see the kingdom purpose the kingdom issue and that's rooted in the kingdom for natural beings we we tend to lean on things that we are that are tangible um, you know, I think you were quoting Psalm 51, 6 to receive wisdom on the inward parts. Uh, that's really God's provision because think about it. Uh, some things are way beyond us and we need, we need God's insight. We need to look beyond what we can see and understand to really grab a hold of God's purpose. And this is where God says, you know, James 1, 5, ask of me and I will give you wisdom liberally. And it's like, our dependence uh, to ask God is key because otherwise we're, we're, we're blind. We're blind. Um, he promises in Ephesians 1, 17 that, um, that he'll give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So today uh, people are saying, I want to see, therefore I believe. And God is saying it's the other way around. You will believe and then you'll see, I'll give you a spirit of wisdom. I'll give you a spirit of insight. I'll give you, I'll impart to you things that you could have never uh, comprehended on your own, uh, right? Wisdom, the vision is caught, not only taught. It's like wisdom is observed. Like we look at people's lives and we say, how can that person do that? Or how can that person remain under such pressure? How can that person confess and be joyful when there's such pain we observe wisdom and uh, i just think a natural person is looking for something that they can control they can they can comprehend or they can manipulate 
wisdom is not able to be manipulated. Thanks, friends, for joining us for another episode of the Inner Revolution podcast. Please find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and subscribe so that you don't miss an episode.